In this video, we're going to take a look at binary trees, specifically constructing them. We're going to look at how to construct a simple binary tree, meaning without pointers, and then a complex binary tree, meaning with pointers. So let's jump right in. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know I like to talk about the terms that you need to know. It makes the content much easier to understand. So let's review some brief terms. Uh, the starting node is what people refer to as the root node. It's in the top center. And when adding data to the tree, it can be greater than the root node or it can be less than the root node. If it's greater than the root node, it branches to the right. If it's less than the root node, it branches to the left. Now, if a node has branches to its left or right, or just one branch to the left or right, we call it a parent node. Now branching off the parent node are what we call child nodes. Now if a single node does not have any branches, there's nothing to the left, nothing to the right, we call it a terminal node or leaf node. A node can have a maximum of two branches, one to the left and one to the right. Now let's put all this in the context so we can understand what this all means. So here's our list of data. We have to have a list of data, something to work with. And we're going to have a 1D array with a lower bound of zero and an upper bound of six to house seven items. Now there's a reason we're using index zero. Usually we emit index zero, so it's easier to keep track of what item we're working with. I chose zero for a specific reason, which we'll get into at the end of this uh, video. So we just have some pseudocode here, declared tree uh, as string and here is our list of items so let's build our tree so we start with the first item in our 1d array which will be our root node we are starting with the name Shane we will then add the rest of the items when I look I see the first index is Shane that is what I'm going to start with so let's build our root node boom there it is that's our root node when I look at my table I just put in Shane, it's in the top center. The rest of my tree is gonna be built based off my root node, which houses the name Shane. All right, so let's just continue. Let's build our tree. So the next item we have is Joey. So we have to ask ourselves: is Joey less than Shane or is it greater than Shane? Well, Joey is less than Shane. How do I know that? Because I'm putting it in alphabetical order. Capital J comes before capital S. Now the computer doesn't know that. It's using the value of the ASCII code table. And in the ASCII code table, capital J has a lower value than capital S. That's how the computer knows it's less than. Because it's less than, it's gonna to go to the left of our tree. Now I need a line connecting these. We have our line. So let's continue with our tree. The next item we have is Stacy. I ask myself, is Stacy greater than Shane or less than Shane? If you were putting in alphabetical order, you would know that it's greater than Shane. So it's going to the right hand side and we have a line to connect these. Let's continue our tree. Now our next item is Ezio. But we just said a parent node or root node cannot have a max of two branches. What do we do here? You just follow the same rules going down the tree. So we start with our root node. Is Ezio less than or greater than Shane? Ezio is less than Shane. So we branch to the left. There's already something here. No big deal. All we do is change what we're comparing. What are we working with? We're working with Ezio. Is Ezio less than Joey or greater than Joey? We know Ezio is less than Joey, so that's gonna to go to the left of Joey. And then we bring in a line to connect those two items. Let's move down our list. Next is Francesco. Francesco is less than Shane, so we go to the left. Francesco is left, less than Joey, so we go to the left. But it's greater than Ezio. Francesco would come after Ezio. Because Francesco is greater than Ezio, it's gonna to go to the right of Ezio and we use a line to connect those. Now we're going to do the same thing with Doug. Doug. Doug is less than Shane so we go to the left. It's less than Joey so we go to the left. It's less than Ezio so we go to the left. There's nothing there. We bring in Doug. We bring in a line to connect these. Now our last item Suzette. Suzette is greater than Shane, greater than Stacy, 
And because it's greater than Stacy, it goes to the right of Stacy, and we wind up with Suzette. So how many leaf nodes do we have here? If you think back, we talked about uh, some terms you need to know. And this is a question that often comes up on um, an assessment. Uh, how many leaf nodes or terminal nodes? And in this video, or this example, there are three. Suzette is a leaf or terminal node because she has no left or right branch. Francesco is a leaf or terminal node because he has no right or left branch. Doug is also a leaf or terminal node because he has no left or right branch. Stacy is not a terminal node and neither is Joey. And the reason Stacy and Joey are not leaf or terminal nodes is because they have at least one branch. And because they have at least one branch, they cannot be considered a leaf node or a terminal node. But Shane, Joey, Stacy, and Ezio, those are parent nodes because they have branches and they have child nodes. For example, the child nodes of Shane are Joey and Stacy. The child node of Stacy is Suzette. The child node of Joey is Ezio. The child node of Ezio are Doug and Francesco. So let's go a little further and I'm going to give you a, four point, a few pointers for using pointers. So a binary tree has what is known as pointers. It has both left pointers and right pointers. This means even if it does not have a child node, it still has a value representing a pointer. We are now going to expand our table so it has left and right pointers and we're going to fill them in so we can see how it works. We must understand how the pointers work so we can actually program a binary tree, which is what we're gonna do in our next video. We can't program a binary tree if we don't understand how they work. So we, all we've done here is expanded our table. We left everything in the same index position. And all we did was we added a column for left pointers and a column for a right pointer. Now on an exam, you could see one with pointers or ones without. It doesn't matter, they work the same way you really want to see one with left pointer and right pointers because usually those are worth uh, more points and they're not very hard uh, to understand. So let's dive in and let's see how this works. So our root node was Shane. Is Shane pointing to something on its left? Yes, it is. Is it pointing something to the right? Yes, it is. So what is it pointing to and where are they in our 1D array? That's what we have to ask ourselves. So here's our table. On the left, Shane is pointing to Joey. So we have a left pointer of one. On the right, Shane is pointing to Stacy. We have a right pointer of two. How in the world did I get those items? Did I just go zero, one, two? No, we didn't. Joey has an index position of one. So Shane is pointing to what is in, on the left, what is in position one. What is in position one? Joey. Shane on the right is pointing to what is in index position two. What is, in the, what is in index position two? Stacy. And I can see that matches our tree. So let's continue. Our next index contained Joey. Is Joey pointing to the left, right, or is he pointing to the right and left? Well, he's pointing to just the left. So we ask ourselves, what is the position of Ezio? Well, what about the right-hand side if there is nothing there? So on the left-hand side, Joey is pointing to slot three or index three. What is in index three? Here's index three. We see it's Ezio. Because Joey is not pointing to anything on the right, we cannot put the number zero. That means on the right hand side, he'd be pointing back to Shane. That is impossible. So we use what's called a null value. A null value is represented as a zero with a line through it. So um, we're gonna talk about when you program, you can't put a zero with a line through it. So what value do, you, do we use? So don't forget, we're going to talk about that. If you want to pause the video here and see if you can figure out the left and right pointer for Stacy, feel free to do so. Okay, I've given you enough time uh, if you pause the video. So let's continue. Our next index was Stacy. Is Stacy pointing to the left, right, or right and left? Well, just right. And we ask ourselves, what is the position of Suzette? And what do we do about the left since Stacy isn't pointing to the left? Well, Stacy's left pointer is going to be a null value, a zero with a line through it. And then the right pointer is six. How did we get six? 
Stacy to the right is pointing to Suzette. How did I get six? I look down my index position for Suzette. I find that Suzette is in position six, so I make my right pointer six. It is that easy. If you want to pause here and fill out the rest, feel free to do so. Okay, let's continue on. So our next index contained Ezio. Is Ezio pointing to the left, right, or right and left? He's pointing to the right and left. We ask ourselves, what is the position of Doug? What is the position of Francesco? I check my table. I can see that Ezio, his left pointer, is pointing to Doug. Inside index position five, I find Doug. His right pointer is four, should be pointing to Francesco. I check index position four, I see it is Francesco. Now, we check Francesco, who's the next? Is Francesco pointing to left, right, or right and left? Uh, neither, he has no pointers. What represents no pointers? A null value. Now, when we have two null values, it's fine. Francesco isn't pointing to anything on the left or the right. So, we don't stop here because we have two null pointers. We keep going. So, we check Doug. Is Doug pointing to the left, right, or right and left? Doug's not pointing to anything. He has no pointers. What represents no pointers? We have another two sets of no pointers. One for the left, one for the right. And now we have to check our last index, uh, which is Suzette. And we ask ourselves the same thing. Um, is Suzette pointing to the left? Uh, nope. Is she pointing to the right? Nope. She's pointing to neither. She has no pointers. What represents no pointers? A no value. This would be our finalized binary tree table, and all we do is fill in what it's pointing to. For example, let's go back to uh, Stacy. Here's Stacy. What is she pointing to on the left? Nothing, a null pointer. In my binary tree, she's pointing to Suzette. I have to find out where Suzette is. So I check my index positions. Here's Suzette, she's in posi position six. So my right pointer for Stacy is gonna be six. Now, there is a couple things that may happen. What if we had an extra index left over? Well, we would simply adjust our left pointers pointing to the next free index. Let's take a look at how that would look. So here's our final binary tree, but we have an index left over. If our index 1D array was larger, we'd have an extra index. We would update the left pointers. Suzette would no longer have a left null pointer she'd be pointing to the next free slot. Let's take a look. So here's Suzette, still not pointing anything to the right, but because she's the last item in our table, she has to point to the next free item, which is seven. Because if we were going to use index seven and add a position to the tree, we would never be able to get to index seven if Suzette, who's the last item in our array, was not pointing to the next free open index. That is why we had to update Suzette's pointer. Now, because index seven, there's nothing there, we leave it blank because there's nothing there, but because it's the last item in our array, it cannot point to any more free positions because there are no more free positions. We represent the left and the right pointer with null values. The open positions are always gonna be pointed by the left pointer. Let's take a look if we had extra indexes left over, not just one, let's say we had many. We adjust our pointers to point to the next free index. Let's take a look. So we're not adjusting our tree here, we're just imagining we had indexes left over. Well, Suzanne is gonna to point to the next free index, which is seven. Here's index seven, nothing there. It's also gonna to point to the next free index on the left, which is eight. Then I check index eight, there's nothing there. It's gonna to point to the next free index. Index nine, there is nothing there. And then because index nine is our last item in the uh, binary tree table, we represent no values on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. One more time, if Suzette had a null value here, we would not be able to access index eight, or seven, eight, and nine because it would say nothing is comes after Suzette. That's not true. Now we could adjust these based on what the data is and then we would update the left and right pointer which we'll do in our program. 
How do we represent zero? So this is the last thing. In programming, we need a value to represent null. And the programming practice is to either use zero or negative one. Now you don't just jump in and say, well, you know, today I feel like using zero, I'm gonna use zero. Or, you know, today I feel like using negative one, we're gonna use negative one. You don't, you don't get the pick, it's dependent upon something. And it's dependent upon whether or not you're using index zero of your 1D array. Because we used index zero today, and I told you there was a specific reason for that, negative one would be our programming value that we would use. If index zero was not used, and our index started with one, meaning we omitted zero, then we would use zero as our null value in our program. When you're writing null, value, null values on paper, it's always zero with a line through it. When you're looking, when you're actually programming, you have to assign a null value, and if you're omitting index zero in your 1D array, you can use zero. If not, and you're including index zero, then you must use negative one. Join us next time as we get ready to program a working binary tree in VB.net.